just cost me £30,000 extra. Alex Stock had increased the transfer fee by £10,000 for each goal of the hat-trick. And so, having signed for Newcastle United, I arrived here at St James's Park in the splendour of a Rolls Royce. There on the steps to greet me was a mass of sporting journalists of the North East, and the first words I ever heard spoken in Newcastle were, this is the first player I've ever seen arrive in his signing on fee. Soon after signing here at St James's Park, um, Joe Harvey came into the dressing room and he said to me, Mel, I have just signed the player who is going to make the bullets for you to fire. Give it. And one gets the feeling that once the barrier is down the first time, there could be quite a few goals. Tudor. McDonald, it's in. Joe had this great perception of being able to marry two people's talents together and I think that he clicked with you and I. Well I think he did click really um, but I, even I got a shock because just after you signed when I did come and they said well I've got a centre forward here that you make the bullets and you'll score them and I said uh, who was that? He says Michael McDonald. I said who the f hey. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of you and uh, <laughs> until, until the day we put the black and white shirt on out there and uh, I just can't believe how we sort of hit it off straight away that um, you were there with your pace and I was there with my left foot and right from the word go for four and five years there that we really, really put it together and uh, all the talk in the North East was Terry Vitt, Martin McDonald or Martin McDonald and Terry Vitt. That's right. When we f first started that, uh, right, right that very first season back in 71, um, well, we we got stuffed at Crystal Palace in the first game 2-0 and we got a 0-0 draw at Spurs. Mm. But um, of course both you and I were making our home debuts on the on the following Saturday when we played Liverpool. And it all that's when I think we started to realise that it clicked. Everybody thought well, Liverpool at St James's Park in the third game of the season just didn't sort of come to me until the Saturday when we were out there on the pitch and there was 54, 55,000 there that I realised then that this was the home for me, and they were really behind us. And then when the game got in, in process, I, I took to you straight away with the first couple of balls that I, I threaded through. And, and I think from then, people saw a new era of people who could pass the ball. I remember a person saying to me after the game, I chipped the ball back to the goalkeeper, and they said, my God, we've never seen that happen at St James' Park since Jim yeah. was playing. I mean, there was many more, than, a lot more games, obviously, but. That was the one that I remember most because it was our home debut and we were on an island to nothing and uh, it was just brilliant to see that. But even that penalty you scored, I, mean, I thought you nearly missed it. But... So here's the chance now for the man we spoke about at the beginning of the programme, Malcolm McDonald, to write his name into the book. So perhaps the boot now on the other foot. United could conceivably go in with a very advantageous 2-1 lead. Indeed. McDonald with the chance to make it that. There it is. And McDonald scores his second. Hibbert with time to look for somebody and search them out up front. Dyson going on the right if they want to use him. Tudor going forward in the middle. Now McDonald. Chance. Oh, what a goal. What a goal. It's a hat trick for McDonald. It's probably one of the best hat -tricks, hat tricks I've seen, although one was a penalty. To take it under that pressure. Um, you had a lot more nerves than I had, Malcolm. <laughs> well, as I ran up and just approaching the ball, my standing foot, my right foot, it just slipped slightly and my left foot came underneath the ball slightly and it went beautifully into the roof of the net. Everybody thought it was a great penalty. I was a little bit lucky. 
It's a lovely feeling, isn't it's it? It's a tremendous strike feeling, it yeah. And see it hit the net. Yeah. I mean, the goals you scored, I mean, uh, I mean, there was 95% of them that I could have scored, but I thought I wouldn't be greedy, I'd let you have them. <laughs> Outside the six yard box, uh, you didn't score many, really, did you? From, apart from the odd one or two. And the drizzle and mist I talked about has now turned to 100% rain. And now, McDonald. Craig. Dermot going down the right wing. McDonald. Oh, he turned beautifully. Great appear for a penalty not given. Nulty. And McDonald is on side. And he's missed it. He got in there three or four times and possibly missed good chances. Where other people then would be reluctant to get back in again into a position to miss. It was that was never the case. We were still in there in the fifth or sixth time, you know. Yeah, I was a brilliant misser. Galen <laughs> McDonald. And a lovely save. It was this pace and this power to hit the target. I mean, you very rarely placed the ball, did you? You know, you saw the white of the goals and you hit it at that target. Great appear for a penalty not given. A man who can have nine shots on a goal, or got nine goal attempts, and score one, and it's the important one. That's the, that's the thing that you add. So Barraclough going over then to take this corner, the first of the second half. And it's in, and Malcolm McDonald has done it. That was set Burns. McDonald, 2-0! There's a phobia here at St James's Park about sides from lower leagues and particularly from the non-league. In 1973 we were drawn in the third round of the FA Cup at home to Hereford. They then were in the Southern League. Twice we went ahead, twice they equalised. The game had already been postponed through bad weather and so we had to make the trek down to Hereford for a replay. On arriving there, the weather was still atrocious even in that part of the country. It was put off time and time and time again. We travelled back to Newcastle, still not having played. We went back down there again a week or so later. We'd gone with an overnight bag expecting to play. We had to go out and buy shirts and underpants at the local gents' outfitters because the game was continuous, continuously postponed until the next day and then the next day, and the next day, and each time it was put off, until finally we actually got the game played. It was on the Saturday of the very next round. Now Green. Busby. Three in the penalty area. McDonald coming in. That's it. Fred Potter so disappointed that he can understand it. They've held out for so long, but Tony Green initiated that move, breaking from midfield. Fed Viv Busby on the right. Busby made the cross to the far post, and Malcolm McDonald headed his 23rd goal of the season for Newcastle United. And a very important goal for them. And a substitute coming on, Roger Griffiths, the right back, has gone off, and Ricky George who scored a hat-trick against Newport for Barnet in the Cup last season, is on the field as number 12. And we thought, we can now put the Newcastle jinx well and truly behind us. Ronnie Radford, he had other ideas. Running through the middle of the park, he must have been some 30-odd yards from goal. The ball has just popped up a little on a piece of mud in front of him, and he let loose one of the most phenomenal volleys I've ever seen. This is Ronnie Radford. To Addison. Tyler now. Good ball. Out by Natras. This is George, the substitute. Oh, turning well. Malinder. 
Meadows heading it on. Tremendous spirit in this Hereford side. They're not giving this up by any means. Radford. Now Tudor's gone down for Newcastle. Radford again. Oh, what a goal! What a goal! Radford, the scorer! The ball was still rising as it hit the top corner of the net. As Ronnie Radford struck it, I could see him falling goal, starting to make his way across the goal to make the save. I thought, Willie, don't bother. And there is no goalkeeper in the world who's going to get hold of that shot. And to rub salt into the wounds. The defender's staying between them, and there's somebody else back. But McDonald on his left foot. Well, Hereford survived there all right. There was a situation developing two against one. This is Tyler. Billy Meadows. Away by Moncur. Radford. Tyler. George. the most embarrassing time that I've ever, ever experienced in football. The amazing thing is, though, and it shows you just what a strange, strange game football is. The following Saturday, we went to Old Trafford to, to play in a first division match. The crowd, as soon as we came out, they were jeering Hereford at us. And it was going to be something that was going to take a long time for us to dispel. Of course, we beat Manchester United 2-0. We trounced them. It's a strange old game. I, I think the colours of Newcastle United t completely typify the club, that they are the two absolute extremes, and that's mm. how, we, how we played. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had had Hendon and Scunthorpe, and, and won a mm. non-league and won a fourth division side, and mm. they actually mm. drew and should have um, well, one. We, we probably could have be, been beaten against Scunthorpe until McDermott got the equaliser late on. In fact, I was on the golf course that day, I was suspended as usual. <laughs> for yeah, four you, weeks. you, you, you had, had a few of those, course, didn't you? Yeah, and, and yet, there were times when we could be absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Take the West Bromwich Albion game. Yeah, yeah. Wild square, Johnson on the touchline. Red by Cassidy. Wake should be right with McDermott. Tudor forward in the inside right position. McDonald in the centre forward position, just left of the penalty spot. Pulling away. Here's McDonald! <laughs> they lost him. will be asking McDonald getting away from the cover the cross a true one and the header beating Peter Latchford on the Thursday before the FA Cup final against Liverpool for some unknown reason Joe Harvey the manager and Keith Birkinshaw the coach decided to play a somewhat different formation. We had played throughout the season 4-3-3, with Stuart Barraclough on the right wing, and John Tudor and I fed off of the crosses that Stuart sent in. The management decided to play 4-2. They left Stuart Barraclough out and put in an extra midfield player. Well, it took us quite a while to adjust. By half time, we had been terrible, Liverpool almost as bad. Lindsay had scored a goal for them, but it had been disallowed, so we remained at nil-nil. As we came off the pitch, we thought, we were saying to each other, surely we cannot play as bad again. We've got our name written on the cup. We've got to take it in the second half. Well, in typical Newcastle fashion, we went out in the second half, and believe it or not, we really were worse. I can only recall actually getting one touch in the whole of the game. That's for McDonald, and he got it. Tudor. 
And a missed kick there, and he didn't quite make it. I think most of us had a bad game, apart from probably McDermott, that uh, Tim McDermott that kept us in the game a little bit. And I think it was just in them days.